Known for an ability to keep flying after taking multiple rounds of enemy machine gun fire, land, and operate in rugged terrain. Destroy groups of enemy fighters with a 30mm cannon and unleash a wide arsenal of attack weapons. The A-10 is described by pilots as a flying tank in the sky able to hover over ground war and provide life-saving close air support in high-threat combat environments. It is built to withstand more damage than any other frame that I know of. It's known for its ruggedness, a 10-pilot LT Colonel Ryan Hayden, 23rd Fighter Group Deputy, Moody AFB, told Scout Warrior in an interview last year. The pilot of the A-10 is surrounded by multiple plates of titanium armor, designed to enable the aircraft to withstand small arms fire and keep flying its attack missions. The A-10 is not agile, nimble, fast, or quick, Hayden said. It's deliberate, measured, hefty, impactful calculated and sound. There's nothing flimsy or fragile about the way it is constructed or about the way that it flies. A 10 Thunderbolt II, affectionately known as the Warthog, has been in service since the late 1970s and served as a close air support combat aircraft in conflicts such as the Gulf War, Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Allied Force in Kosovo, among others. Having flown combat missions in the A-10, Hayden explained how the aircraft is specially designed to survive enemy ground attacks. There are things built in for redundancy. If one hydraulic system fails, another one kicks in, he said. If the aircraft loses all of its electronics including its digital displays and targeting systems, the pilot of an A-10 can still fly, drop general-purpose bombs and shoot the 30mm cannon. Hayden explained. So when I lose all the computers and the calculations, the targeting pod and the heads-up display, you can still point the aircraft using a degraded system at the target and shoot. We are actually trained for that, he said. Unlike other air platforms built for speed, maneuverability, air-to-air -air dogfighting and air-to-air -air weapons, the A-10 is specifically engineered around its gun. A 30mm cannon aligned directly beneath the fuselage, the gun is also called a Gawaita Gatling gun. The 30mm cannon has seven barrels. They are centered the way the aircraft fires. The firing barrel goes right down the center line. You can point the aircraft and shoot at the ground. It is designed for air-to-ground attack, Hayden explained. Armed with 1,150 rounds, the 30mm cannon is able to fire 70 rounds a second. Hayden explained the gun alignment as being straight along the fuselage line without an upward cant like many other aircraft have. Also, the windows in the A-10 are also wider to allow pilots a larger field of view with which to see and attack targets. The engines of the A-10 are mounted high so that the aircraft can land in austere environments such as rugged, dirty, or sandy terrain, Hayden said. The engines on the A-10 are General Electric TF-34GE100 turbofans. I've seen this airplane land on a desert strip with the main gear buried in a foot of sand. On most planes, this would have ripped the gear up, but the A-10 turned right around and took off, he added. There have been many instances where A-10 engines were shot up and the pilots did not know until the return from a mission, Hayden said. These aerodynamic configurations and engine technology allow the A-10 to fly slower and lower, in closer proximity to ground forces and enemy targets. The wings are straight and broadened. The engines are turbofan. They were selected and designed for their efficiency, not because of an enormous thrust. We have a very efficient engine that allows me to loiter with a much more efficient gas burn rate, Hayden said. By virtue of being able to fly at slower speeds of 300, the A-10 can't fly beneath the weather at altitudes of 100 feet. This gives pilots an ability to see enemy targets with a naked eye giving them the ability to drop bombs, fire rockets, and open fire with the 30mm cannon in close proximity to friendly forces. We shoot really close to people. We do it 50 meters away from people. I can sometimes see hands and people waving. If I get close enough and low enough I can see the difference between good guys and bad guys and shoot," Hayden explained. The aircraft's bombs, rockets, and cannon attack enemies up close or from miles away, depending on the target and slant range of the aircraft, Hayden added. We deliver the munitions by actually going from a base position, 
then pointing the jet at the ground and then pulling the trigger once we reached the desired range, he explained. The A-10 uses both lightning and sniper pods engineered with infrared and electro-optical sensors able to find targets for the pilot. The aircraft uses the same targeting pod as F-15E and F-16. However, most of the fighters can transition between the two targeting pods and we can, based on our software, Hayden said. The A-10 carries a full complement of weapons to include joint direct attack munitions, or damn GPS guided bombs. Its arsenal includes both 38s, both 31s, both 54s, MK-82s, MK-84s, AGM-65s, Maverick missiles, A-9 Sidewinder missiles and rockets along with illumination flares, jammer pods and other protective countermeasures. The aircraft can carry 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance, eight can fly under the winds and three under fuselage pylon station, Air Force statements said. Pilots flying attack missions in the aircraft communicate with other aircraft and ground forces using radios and a data link known at Link 16. Pilots can also text message with other aircraft and across platforms, Hayden added. The cockpit is engineered with what is called the CAS cockpit, or common avionics architecture system, which includes moving digital map displays and various screens showing pertinent information such as altitude, elevation, surrounding terrain, and target data. A-10 pilots also wear a high-tech helmet which enables them to look at targeting video on a helmet display. I can project my targeting pod video into my eye so I can see the field of view. If something shoots at me I can target it simply by looking at it, he explained. During the early months of combat and Operation Enduring Freedom, in a battle known as Operation Anaconda, Hayden's A-10 wound up in a fast-moving, dynamic combat circumstance wherein U.S. military were attacking Taliban fighters in the Afghan mountains. During the mission in March of 2002, Hayden was able to see and destroy Taliban anti-aircraft artillery, guns, and troop positions. We could see tracer fire going from one side of the valley to the other side of the valley. We were unable to tell which was from good guys and which was from bad guys. Using close air support procedures in conjunction with our sensors on board. We deconstructed the tactical situation and then shot, he said. The Air Force 2018 budget plans to fund all 283 A-10 attack planes, fully confirming earlier service statements that the Warthog would live well into the future, a report in Business Insider said. Air Force is beginning to work on how fast, lethal, durable and capable a new A-10-like aircraft would need to be in order to provide U.S. military ground troops with effective close air support for decades to come. Senior service officials are now exploring draft requirements concepts and evaluating the kind of avionics, engineering, weapons, armor, and technical redundancy the aircraft would need. Air Force officials told Scout Warrior. Many of the core technical attributes and combat advantages of the A-10 will be preserved and expanded upon with the new effort, officials said. The performance of the A-10 Warthog in the ongoing bombing campaign against ISIS. Coupled with the Air Force's subsequent decision to delay the aircraft's planned retirement, has led the service to begin the process of developing a new, longer-term A-10-type platform. Following an announcement from Pentagon leaders that the A-10 will not begin retiring but rather will serve until at least 2022, Air Force and DoD officials are now hoping to keep a close air support aircraft for many years beyond the previously projected time frame. Given the emerging global threat environment, it would make sense that the Air Force would seek to preserve an aircraft such as the A-10. While the aircraft has been extremely successful attacking ISIS targets such as fuel convoys and other assets, the A-10 is also the kind of plane that can carry and deliver a wide-ranging arsenal of bombs to include larger laser-guided and precision weapons. This kind of firepower, coupled with its 30mm cannon, titanium armor plates and built-in redundancy for close air support, makes the A-10 a valuable platform for potential larger-scale mechanized force-on-force -force type warfare as well. The A-10 has a unique and valuable niche role to perform in the widest possible range of combat scenarios to include counterinsurgency, supporting troops on the ground in close proximity and bringing firepower, protection, and infantry support to a large-scale war. Air Force officials have told Scout Warrior that the current approach involves a three-pronged effort. 
The Air Force may consider simply upgrading the existing fleet of A-10s in a substantial way in order to extend its service life. A quieter and off-the-shelf existing aircraft or develop a new close air support platform through a developmental effort. We are developing the draft requirements document. We are staffing it around the Air Force now. When it's ready, then we will compare that to what we have available, compare it to keeping the A-10, compare it to what it would take to replace it with another airplane. And we will work through that process, Lt. Gen. James Holmes, Deputy Chief of Staff for Strategic Plans and Requirements, told reporters last year. Holmes went on to explain that the service was, broadly speaking, exploring ways to achieve, preserve and sustain air superiority in potential long-term, high-end combat engagements. He added that considerations about a close air support replacement aircraft figured prominently in the strategic calculus surrounding these issues. As a result, the Air Force will be looking for the optimal type of close air support platform by weighing various considerations such as what the differences might be between existing aircraft and future developmental platforms. Cost and affordability will also be a very large part of the equation when it comes to making determinations about an A-10 replacement. Holmes explained. The question is exactly where is the sweet spot as we talked about between what's available now and what the optimum car replacement would be. We are working along that continuum to see exactly what the requirement is that we can afford and the numbers that we need to be able to do the mission, Holmes added. Several industry platforms, such as Raytheon's TX plane and the A-29 Embraer EMP Super 2 Kano aircraft, are among options being looked at as things which could potentially be configured for a close air support plane. Having the requisite funds to support this would be of great value to the Air Force. Air Force Chief of Staff General Mark Welsh told lawmakers that, despite the prior plan, the service did not want to retire the A-10. Prior plans to retire the fleet of A-10s were purely budget-driven, senior Air Force leaders have consistently said. I don't want to retire it. Welsh told a congressional committee in early March of last year. Now, the Air Force is keeping it. Air Force leaders had previously said that the emerging multi-role F-35 would be able to pick up the close air support mission.